What's up guys, this is the House from Gun Gamers, and I am back after an extended hiatus. I know that uh, the last three or four weeks have been pretty dry without my videos. Probably not. You've probably enjoyed the break immensely. Uh, I can tell you I have. Uh, life has been very busy. Uh, good busy, but busy. And now I am back because things are cooling off a little bit, as is the weather. So now we're getting toward the tail end of airsoft season for me. My last event is going to be Desolation from Omega Productions. And then we're going to go into the off season. But back to videos, right? That's what you guys are here for. Today's subject, full disclosure, was inspired by a video that was uploaded by Jet the Desert Fox. Uh, most of you probably know him. I don't exactly need to give him a shout out. But he uploaded a video where he discussed his experience at Milson West Spearhead Saratov and one of the teams that went and how they interpreted the uniform requirements or rather how they executed the uniform requirements for one of the factions, that being Militia. I was actually at Spearhead Saratov on the Militia faction. I was with uh, a different platoon. We were headquarters platoon, but I was there. And uh, yeah, that video obviously had a, a bit of a hot take on, uh, on whether or not the way the uniform code was enforced was to Jet's liking. And uh, I don't want to comment on that particular situation because in my personal opinion, any comment I would have is irrelevant to the fact that Josh approved it. I mean, Josh is the game master. The game master sets uniform requirements to give the experience he wants to give. And as a result, what, what good is my comment? I mean, Josh approved everything that went down. So it's, it's really no big deal, uh, at least not to me. You know, you're entitled to your opinion one way or the other. But I do want to expand that particular video's concept, so to speak, in scope. And I want to bring the conversation to the general idea of uniform requirements in Milsim or in Airsoft, period. You know, what, what good are uniform requirements? What are their limitations? What are ways to work around their limitations? Uh, what is the reason for uniform requirements? What might be some different ways to execute uniform requirements? And we are going to talk about that in a very general sense today. So this is going to be a very nerd-heavy video. I know it's, it's probably not the most exciting thing for you guys to come back to, unless you're game design nerds like me. But we are going to talk about uniform requirements. And if you have thoughts on this subject as I'm going, you know, leave your comments down below. And uh, just be civil and be good to each other, and I think we can have a fun discussion with this. So, uniform requirements. Most of us are familiar with them in one form or another, but if you're not familiar for some reason, if you know maybe you've never been to a Milsim game, if maybe your field just does you know blue bands or red bands or something like that, uniform requirements are when each team or faction is required to wear certain colors, patterns, or pieces of kit that identify them as members of a certain faction or team. A uh, good example of this is the traditional green versus tan. And this is something most of us are definitely familiar with. You got green camos versus tan camos. And then you run into everything in between. And that gets right into one of our first limitations. And one of the first limitations of uniform requirements is that in most cases, unless you go with very clear, bright colors and require large amounts of those very clear, bright colors, ambiguity is kind of the point of camouflage. You're supposed to blend in. You're supposed to look, you're supposed to look like you're part of the environment. And as a result, with certain camos, it can, can kind of be difficult to figure out who's on what team. And maybe some of you don't remember when multicam got really big in airsoft overnight, but there was a lot of discussion over whether or not multicam should be tan or green. Because in different environments, multicam can look more tan or more green. And when sold from different suppliers, multicam can look more tan or more green. And, you know, in different levels of lighting, it can be very ambiguous. So there was a long discussion at a lot of fields and events about whether or not multicam should A, even be allowed, or B, count as green or tan. Uh, it seems now that everyone's pretty much standardized on multicam being considered tan because multicam is kind of familiar enough to everybody that they can pick it out at this point. But that's just an example. Uh, another example would be, uh, you know, Milson West. Their way of doing uniforms is by having 
the militia team, be M81 or otherwise, like kind of civvy, um, you know, militia looking. Uh, our particular platoon, H HQ platoon, was wearing all black. Uh, that was what we were told to wear. And NATO is not allowed to wear black. Russians are allowed to wear black for certain kits, and our militia team was asked to. And uh, then you can have the Russian uniforms and then the M81 versus NATO, which is mostly multicam. But then you get into some ambiguity because then you have German and Polish Impressionists. And from a distance, German and Polish camos, they're foreign. They're not standard multicam. So to more inexperienced players who aren't used to Milsim West, you see a bunch of dudes run around Flectarn holding what are not M4s, what are G36s. The G36s should be a giveaway if you know what you're doing. But that looks kind of ambiguous. More ambiguous, I would say, is uh, the Polish green camo. And they've got a support gunner running around carrying a PKM. PKMs are Russian weapons. Uh, that's, that's the origin of that weapon. The real Polish use it. And as a result, the airsoft Polish use it. But that's another example where ambiguity comes into play. So how do you counter ambiguity? How do you get around that? Well, you would get around that just with practice and experience or with, uh, you know, challenge and pass or with any kind of other number of different ways of knowing who is where at what time. Uh, if you have a good chain of command, you should have a good idea generally of where everyone is and who they are. Uh, like, for example, if we're coming up on an area and we know, hey, we've got Grom in this building and let's say I'm on NATO, then I should hopefully know not to shoot the people in this building without double checking to see if they're Grom first. It, just an example. Or if I'm uh, on the Russian team and or militia and I see a bunch of dudes wearing ATAX, which is actually an authorized camo for Russian teams doing that impression at Milson West. If you see ATAX and from a distance it looks like multicam, double check. Do they have AKs? Do the challenge and pass? You know, all that, all that number of things that you can do for context clues. And all else fails, look which way they're pointing. If they're pointing their guns at your buddies, they're probably the enemy. If they're pointing their guns at your enemy, they're probably your buddies. So just one way to kind of work within that. And that is part of the simulation. You know, uniform requirements in the real world are not... I, again, speaking as a totally unqualified, non-military scrub, but from what I understand, uniforms in the real world can get very ambiguous. I mean, look at modern Russian FSB units are all using multicam. Uh, modern American units are using M81 and using multicam, and then you've got different copies of Woodland and different copies of multicam in service all over the world. It, it's, you know standing armies are starting to look pretty similar. So part of the simulation is figuring out who is who, who you should be shooting at, and who maybe you shouldn't be shooting at. That is part of the game at a Milsim game like that. Now that was a very Milsim West heavy example. Uh, if we're talking about say American Milsim or Lion Claws where they do like standard green versus tan, that can get more and less ambiguous. Uh, certain camos, like I said, that count as green can sometimes be mistaken for tan. Certain camos are sometimes tan, can be mistaken for green. But the same context clues apply. If your team has a good challenge and pass and good intel and communication, you should be able to generally avoid blue on blue if you've got good fire discipline. And that is required at any airsoft game. Don't shoot your buddies. That's one of the number one things you want to avoid. Shooting your buddies is... Uh, just as bad as if they got shot by an enemy, because a hit is a hit. So just be aware of other things you can use other than uniform requirements to know who you're supposed to shoot at. And constantly be on the lookout and be listening for all these different context clues and for how you can implement them. Watch more experienced players. Watch how they do it. And, you know, sometimes the slow process of IFF can get you into some trouble, or if you're good at it and you're quick at it, it can avoid some trouble. So just practice, practice, practice. That's what gets you better. All right, we've talked about the practical application of uniform requirements, uh, but let's talk about why you would build your uniform requirements a certain way and for what experience and for what kind of rule sets and whether or not maybe they're right for a game that you're running. Uh, uniform requirements at Milson West are meant to build the experience of United States versus Russia and Russian militia sympathizers. 
Uh, that is where Jet had his issue. He felt that there was too much NATO kit being used on Militia. You know my opinion on that. The experience that the Game Master wants to create is going to dictate how they enforce the uniform requirements. So that's, that's what happened. But in general, the United States versus Russia and Russian Militia sympathizers. And that is why they have their uniform requirements built as they are. Uh, or United States and NATO, I should say. Not just the United States. I just mentioned German and Grom, right? Uh, then there are our British kits and all that kind of stuff. And that is meant to give you flexibility for impression kits on the NATO team. So if you have a squad or more, you can have an impression group of, oh, we're a United States ally, such as, I know there have been Israelis at some games. I know there have been Aussies or Aussies at Saratov. Uh, then you might have um, Grom, Germans, any number of different countries. And then you have, within Russia, you have all those different units that they can do impression kits of. And militia is kind of where you occupy if you don't have an impression Russian kit, but you want to be on the Russian team. That's kind of where you fall. That's where we usually play, because most of us don't have Russian impressions. We have kind of Farby Russian-ish kits, or we'll wear black and have a satchel as instructed by uh by the the uh, rules of being hq squad then you get into american milson lion claws and other team other games where they have kind of their own lore it's not meant to be as realistic necessarily in its depiction of a large-scale conflict between standing armies so there's no like you have to wear multicam there's like hey if you're on tan you can wear multicam you can wear tricolor desert you can wear solid tan you can wear, you know, the LBX patterns. All kinds of different stuff flies, just as long as you generally adhere to the principle of being tan. And then just like green, you can wear M81 Woodland, you wear Flectarn, you can wear Solid Green, you wear Tiger Stripe, all kinds of different stuff. And those are more, I would say, Airsoft specifically designed uniform requirements. Those are designed for the majority of Airsoft players to pretty easily be able to put that together without too much investment or without overhauling their entire setup. You know, gear color and gun don't really matter. Uh, it's just your base uniform and your headgear. And I think uh, then you run into like kind of the middle point where Desert Fox Events wants your load-bearing gear generally to adhere to your faction colors as well. Their enforcement of that isn't super strict from what I've seen. But then they also have the option of bright colors, like red is a color for the uh, ERT, and then blue is the color for Southern Syndicate. So if you want to incorporate those brighter colors into your loadout, that's also a very airsoft design rule set. That's meant to be pretty easy. Like, if you want to go on Southern Syndicate, wear a pair of blue jeans, wear a blue shirt or maybe a tan shirt, and then wear whatever your load-bearing gear is, and that's pretty easy. Or if you want to go on ERT, wear black and wear some green and then have like maybe a red shirt or something. Very easy. So those are the different levels of uniform requirements. So you get the uniform requirements where it's like, hey, have your base uniform match your faction color. Then there's, hey, have your base uniform and your gear set match your faction. And then there's base uniform, gear set, and weapon. And that's when you get really strict. And that's like the Milson West level of uniform requirement. I know there's other promoters, just not promoters I've personally gone to. If you know of other promoters that generally look for like weapon restrictions and whatnot, put those down in the description below. Give people more places and more promoters to play with. So the reason for these different levels of uniform requirement, like I said, is the experience that you're going for. If you're more Milson light and you're more designing to be, you know, an airsoft game first, rather than having that heavy of a level of simulation and immersion, then, you know, it doesn't really matter what people wear as long as they can be, you know, generally at a distance, looked at and seen as their faction within the limitations that I mentioned, obviously. Uh, but what about no uniform requirements at all? Uh, what games do you generally see with no uniform requirements? And those are usually open plays. And uh, then you'll go to some games, uh, some larger games at like local fields. And what they'll do is they'll do a tape system. I do these at my own games. And the reason for that is if you have a player base and if you have a field where enforcing uniform requirements is basically not going to happen. Uh, I don't mean to you know denigrate anybody. I'm not saying this to be elitist or to sound like a snob. But at like River City, 
enforcing uniform requirements is very difficult. River City is an open play field, and the ops I run there are like a very, very light introduction into some level of simulation-based gaming where it's more objective-driven and continuous. And telling people, oh, you have to wear green and tan at this open play field, that's going to turn some people off because when the ticket price is only, you know, $25 for the day, people don't want to spend $50 to $100 on a uniform to play on their chosen faction. Especially not when at an open play field you'll have people walking on and walking off and you might need to adjust teams. How do you adjust teams when everyone's wearing particular colors? Well, you need to do tape. But then when you do tape on some people, it gets confusing because people aren't looking for tape, they're looking for uniform. And as a result, it's easier to just cut the middleman, tell everyone to wear whatever they want, and then just do tape. Uh, I know Ground Zero Airsoft in Connecticut does this because it's a very similar situation. People don't want to spend tons of money on different uniform codes for games that don't cost that much money and for, you know, games that maybe are attracting more players who are more casual, players who aren't traveling six, seven, eight hours and spending an entire weekend and taking vacation time to go to this game. They're a little more casual. They're looking for a more casual, player-friendly experience. And that's when you just do tape. That's generally easiest way to go about it for an open play type game. At Milsim games where people are traveling, people are spending hundreds of dollars on a ticket, you can ask a little more and that's where you see most promoters and most events doing that. There are local fields that like from day one have enforced uniform requirements and some of those local fields attract a lot of players and they attract a certain crowd of players who are more into that kind of thing and that's great for them and that's awesome. So if you have one of those fields like that, you know, again, post in the comments below. Let people know uh, more places to play. But it also will vary by event. You know, some of those fields that do have uniform requirements of certain events might not during other games. It's, as I said earlier, it very much depends on the experience and the player base that is being catered to for the event. If your event has uniform requirements or not, or what level of uniform requirements, I think I've just explain pretty well the pros and cons of each. Uh, hopefully you found this video at least somewhat interesting. Uh, I know it's been a while and I'm probably horrifically out of practice when it comes to speaking on these kinds of subjects, but I'll get back into it, I swear. Uh, for now, I'm gonna finish my Bowmore, which I got thanks to Corey, and I am going to uh, get back to the grind and you will see more of me very soon. And of course, the rest of the Gun Gamers crew. I mean. You can't ignore them, right? You guys like them, right? They're okay. I don't really like them that much. Nah, they're great. All right. <laughs> I'm going to mercy kill this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Vinny House, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Check the description below if you'd like to buy a t-shirt or a patch, and use the coupon code JUDY10 for 10% off of your next order at Amped Airsoft. Thank you again for watching, and praise Judy.